Hello, my name's Vince. Welcome back to the channel. I've just been spending a very enjoyable couple of hours going through some of the patches from the latest sample library by Orchestral Tools called Salu. Salu is the spiritual successor to Tallinn, a sample library that came out a little while ago. And both of the libraries are geared towards scoring um, and specifically with a particular kind of Nordic flavour. Um, this sample library was recorded at the Arvo Pert Centre in Estonia and it's just got a really nice uh, and very particular kind of vibe and aesthetic that it's going for and the musicians themselves have been carefully selected and seem to have been quite creatively involved in the production of the library which is always um, something cool to engage with as a composer. So this isn't a sponsored video but Orchestral Tools were very kind to send me a copy of the library to have a look and so this is kind of my shout out to them giving them some feedback and just my own thoughts and also um, just sharing kind of what I found with all of you guys as well. So just to give you a bit of context I've been working professionally as a composer for about the last 10 years. Um, I've been scoring games, advertising, um, animation, I write music for production music libraries. I already own quite a lot of orchestral sample libraries and just I've got a lot of my sort of bases covered when it comes to synths and sounds that I can use. I'm also somebody who's coming from quite a traditional compositional background so the way that I most often write is I'll have a particular sound or a melody and instrumentation in my head and then it'll just be a case of working it out on the page, on the paper or on the screen and just trying to make that happen. The reason I bring that up is because at first glance this sample library looks like it might be one of those ones which has a lot of phrases and performances and patches where all you have to do is kind of hold down one key and it sort of does the rest of the work for you. And that kind of approach tends to clash with my way of working. And so I was curious to see, you know, how much of the content of this library is along those lines and how much is there that I can really shape and work and sculpt and control in a way that's going to be beneficial for my own productions. So the rest of this video I'm just going to be going through some of the patches which I've picked out as particular highlights and things that I think for me are just genuinely going to be really useful or just that are pretty sounds that I wanted to show off to you guys and I'm just going to do some noodling on each of those and talk a little bit more generally about how the library works. So this library is based around um, voices and chamber instruments. So we've got string quartet, solo viola, solo cello, um, male and female choir. We've also got some solo voices. Then we have a kind of trio of harp, canal and piano. The canal is a kind of dulcimer-like instrument with this sort of sparkly tone to it. Um, and then we also have some percussion here. And generally these aren't your traditional percussion samples, they're using all kinds of interesting techniques. Um, this is quite a sort of a useful category of sounds and I sort of think it's the type of thing where more is better, you know, you can never have too many special effects kind of percussion patches because each one's doing something a little bit different and it's nice to just have a good selection in your arsenal for general composing. And then there's also this folder down here which has uh, loads of processed sounds which use the same source material um, but create some kind of cool evolving pad. I'm not really going to focus on this category so much um, or I think actually I'll just leave it out completely for this video just because that aligns more with my own needs. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. So the first couple of patches I've chosen are string quartet patches. With some of these I'm going to use a breath controller to perform them because I want to be able to play with both hands. Um, but obviously you can map the CCs to whatever you want. So the first one I've got is string quartet sustains non vibrato.
So, yeah, we've got um, a very dry, very close kind of sound in general. So you have complete control over the ambience of these patches. So next we have a pizzicato patch. Um, I should note that with this category of sounds, it's um, just the whole string quartet basically playing in unison. So the sustains there, it was the violin, the cello, and two violins all just playing the same note. So. So when you do start to play chords and things, you sort of essentially get the sound of a small chamber ensemble. In terms of the articulations that they have, you know, they have uh, a lot of the standard ones. They have legato and they actually have octave sustains here, which are quite cool. You know, the, all the usual stuff. But um, as I say, I mainly wanted to focus on the sounds that I thought were kind of particular and a bit unique to this library. So um, the pizzicatos, I just thought were particularly nice, kind of warm, controlled, delicate. So the dynamic range isn't huge. They've recorded basically pianissimo and mezzo piano. So you can hear a bit of, uh, not machine gunning, but a bit of sort of sample repetition if you do something like that. It's not perfect, but what I like about it is it's very clean at those low dynamic layers. So I can imagine using this in a context where there's not much else going on in the track and you want this to be kind of a featured instrument. You know, I think because it has that intention behind it of being quiet, there's a particular sort of delicacy and attention to detail. And as I say, it's just very clean, really responsive, easy to play, consistent. So, you know, limited range. What's nice in the sign player, you've got this is the range of recorded notes, but you can actually extend it artificially. And it shows up as gray here, meaning that it's kind of pitch bended it down. But it's pretty good context you're not really gonna miss it. The next sound is called irregular slow accent and it goes like this. You can see I keep accidentally playing notes that are outside of the range, so it takes a bit of getting used to, or I could just expand the range a bit artificially, but isn't that a great sound? So actually this is probably one of the ones that might be better to demonstrate without the breath controller, so because it is it's um very well balanced, so if I just leave it at a single dynamic level, even though there are these fluctuations, overall it kind of stays about the same, but then you can make it swell up. And then you can add additional dynamic range using these controls here, which essentially activates a filter. And of course you could use CC11 to increase the dynamic range. And there's a volume range slider here as well. You know, useful controls here in the bottom right. You can control the envelope, release time, turn the legatos on and off if there are any um, you know things that are specific to the patch. Uh, this is my first time using Sign Player actually um, because I own Berlin Woodwinds but from the contact days so um, 
yeah, I have been getting used to this new interface. Anyway, so what I like about that sound is um, it's detailed and there's a lot of motion, but it's not over the top. And so I can see that being just a really useful kind of bread and butter sound, you know, for just adding that little bit of movement in a pad. Um, you know, somewhere where you might ordinarily just hold down a string chord, but just having a little bit of undulation. And it's like, there's a lot of performance in there being given to me for free, if you like, but I don't feel bad about it. Like, I feel like um, it's sufficiently generic that I can use it in a bunch of different contexts and it can kind of mean different things. Um, and yeah, it's just another great color to play with besides regular sustains or short notes. Um, let's move on to solo cello. So the solo string instruments, um, I'll give you a little taste of like the basic kind of legato type patch, this sort of expressive legato. Um, both the viola and the cello, they're pretty decent. If I was going to write a cello piece, well, first of all, I'd probably hire a cellist um, to perform it on the final track. But otherwise, I tend to lean towards um, physical modeling type instruments like the SWAM series by audio modeling, just because I prefer to be able to perform a range of articulations and be able to kind of switch between them very smoothly. The reason I mention that is because I would still use a sample like this because it's very vibey and in the right context I think it could be better than something like the Swam cello. Let's have a listen anyway. So I tried to demonstrate a range of uh, legato speeds there. It does a really good job in general. I mean, it's a bit behind my hand, but that's to be expected with this kind of sample. Um, you know, I'm just very impressed generally with how playable this is at a range of different speeds. Um, but obviously it seems to excel at the kind of medium to slow tempos. And yeah, it's just a very vibey kind of sound. You don't have control over the legato speed, so you can't do like those kind of portamento slides or um, you can't remove the vibrato on it. You kind of have this limited range of things that you can do, but within that, it's very good at what it does. It's not completely clean, you know, you can hear a little bit of phasiness sometimes, but um, generally speaking, it's pretty solid. Same thing goes for the uh, viola legato, similar kind of deal. See that last phrase especially, it was very clean and very close to what I was trying to create, you know. I think there was one sort of blip you might have heard earlier, but generally speaking it's very capable. It doesn't do like huge expressive romantic vibrato kind of FF type of sound, that's not really what it's for. But yeah, I mean in context with a bit of reverb, I think it could sound pretty great for something with a bit more of a chilled vibe. So the next kind of category of sounds that I wanted to show you with the solo string instruments are these things called circular bowing. So this is what this sounds like. I'm gonna use the mod wheel for this one, I think. So again, what I like about this sound is there's a lot to it, but the concept is very simple. You can tell it's a stringed instrument, you can tell it's being bowed and it's being kind of rough, 
And it's got all this beautiful overtony, harmonic-y complexity to it. Um, and it's kind of going at a certain sort of natural tempo. Um, but that's it. It's not pushing too much of an identity onto the onto the track, kind of beyond the fact that it's a, a rough sounding cello sustain. And it's a bit weird, but it's not so weird that you wouldn't use it on a film score or, you know, on a even on a TV ad or something, you know, it just sounds a little bit edgy, but it's not um, going to completely throw the audience for a loop. So you have those on the viola and the cello. I think I'm going to move on to the next one just for the sake of time. So irregular repetitions. So here we have, I guess, one of the signature sounds of the library, which is this kind of aleatoric sort of sound, which sort of basically means there's like a semi-randomized sort of scattery, particle quality to the sound. Let's just have a listen. So you can kind of hear what's going on there and it increases in intensity and the notes of the the lengths of the notes get a little bit longer as you go up the mod wheel. Um, there is a similar patch for the ensemble, um, but I just find it a bit full on. And in general, a lot of a lot of those kind of more strange articulations for the full string quartet, um, it gets a bit complex and it feels like it starts to get to the point where it's just somebody else is now writing the music. It's not really in my control anymore. Whereas with the solo cello, because it's just one instrument going and you can stack them in real time, I just feel like I have a little bit more control over what's going on. And if I wanted to make the sound larger, I can just play more keys. Do you know what I mean? Along that line, we've got um, this one, which is unique to the cello, actually. It's not on the viola. And that's called Irregular Drops Fifth. So let's just listen to that. So as you can hear, it's kind of got these little glitches in the sound. It's a nice uh, idea. It doesn't feel like too much of an imposition on your own ideas and creativity. And so it's kind of becomes about more how you use it. And of course, you don't have to use these sounds on their own. You know, you could stack them up. You could create really interesting colors by sort of blending them into each other. In fact, within the sign play, you've got some options to uh, blend different articulations into one another in real time using CCs. Um, so I'm just going to keep crashing through these patches. Next, let's move on to the voices. So we've got male and female choir both included with this one. And um, here's just the kind of the basic choir patch. So you can get a flavour. Let's give it a bit of reverb. Uh. So that's your very kind of basic uh, sustained patch. No legato or anything like that. You do have all kinds of legato patches in there. You've got solo voice patches, but I think I just, um, 
I don't know, I just really wanted to show playing them kind of straight off the keyboard, just improvising. It just instantly has a, a particular kind of quiet, intimate choir sound, very fantasy. My other choir library, I use uh, Olympus Elements, and that's just a great kind of coverall. It has this more kind of epic, grand orchestral quality, whereas this is very much all about sort of intimacy and, and more of a quiet kind of approach. Now let's have a look at some of the choir effects. Now they're actually extensive and there are all sorts of things from glissandi and bends and clusters and um, throat singing and all sorts of things but um, the ones that I thought uh, would be most useful for me and kind of got me the most excited are these three here. So let's just have a look at this first one, Irregular Crescendo. These are just the female ones, but they come in male as well. So you can hear what's going on there, just softly, gently evolving, but in a way that doesn't catch the ear too much, and especially in those female voices just sounds so atmospheric, and yeah, it's just something that I don't have anything else that can do that. Let's have a listen to Irregular Syllables, which is kind of similar, um, similar concept, but you'll hear it's just a little bit different. So in that case it has a few more little consonant sounds in there and you know starts to give you kind of spine tingling uh, auto, auto meridian kind of vibes. Um, yeah really cool and yeah you can use it kind of like that like a pad. You can kind of start to give it more life by using CC11 to kind of give it even more dynamic range and, and more kind of dynamic arc. Um, but I just love it as that kind of simple textural layer and yeah really inspiring just great fun this one is definitely one that i've picked out just because it's really fun to play and it's hard to imagine a situation where i'm going to use it let me just play it before i say anything else Just way too much fun. Um, yeah, it's funny because that kind of patch, you'd want it to be the main feature of the track, but I don't know, me personally, I wouldn't feel quite comfortable submitting something like that, either as a library track or, you know, for a pitch for an advert or something. Somehow, because I didn't kind of create that enough, it doesn't feel like it's got enough of my stamp on it. So, it's a beautiful set piece and just like, it has this amazing wow factor and immediacy and it kind of literally gives me chills. Um, maybe I'll contrive some way of, of getting it, shoehorning it into a project, but you know, I would say that there are quite a few patches like that in this library which 
Um, for somebody like me who loves getting kind of nitty gritty, um, are really inspiring, but kind of don't can't really help me get all the way there because they're not tweakable enough to make my own. They're just kind of they are what they are. So it's it's one of the strengths and one of the weaknesses kind of at the same time. Let's move on. Now we've got alto, which is a solo voice. There's also a bass solo voice, and they each come with legato and sustains and all that kind of jazz. Um, which is quite novel. I don't actually own any solo voice sample libraries. I guess it's something where I'll just record myself or expect to get a singer. And um, and so, you know, that's kind of interesting. I quite liked the option of, uh, or the idea of just having in my template a solo voice. Um, so, for example, I can do things like... Uh... Just create a simple background drone or something, you know. And they have a really nice vulnerable quality, these ones. It's like if you're going to have a, a solo synth voice, you might as well get a patch which has some actual character and some intention behind it. By the way, the vocal ensemble that they used is called Vox Clementis, or is it Clementis? Anyway, they're a very well-established classical voice ensemble. They're known for Gregorian chant. Um, they're known for recording Arvo Pertz music. Um, yeah, they're badass. And I think they were um, yeah, involved in the production of the samples and brought a lot of their personality to it. Um, as I mentioned, there's some overtone singing in there. There's a lot of cool group textures, but not going to have time to go through it all, sadly. But yeah, cool. So we've got a solo alto, there's also a solo bass. Similarly, it's quite characterful. And then we have these, um, you know, more sort of scattergun type patches. Again, really simple. So yeah, let me just kind of show you what I mean by some of the other like uh, group articulations where for me personally, it gets a bit much. Here's the group sort of version of, of what you just heard. It just has a much wider, richer quality straight out of the box. I guess it just kind of feels complete already, whereas there's something about using the solo voices where I feel like I still have some work to do and I still can kind of figure out how thick or thin I want the sound to be. Um, yeah, so just personal preference. So now let's move on to the next group of sounds, which is the canal, the harp, and the piano playing as an ensemble. So I'll just um, start with the canal to begin with, which um, I'll just play for context on its own. to play with two keyboards. I had the dynamic volume range set to not very much there. Now we can hear it with a bit more dynamic range. Almost has a synth kind of quality to it. Um, very smooth, very rounded, very warm. Um, but not the most sort of unique sound in the world. I mean, I probably could do a similar thing with some of my dulcimer patches. The staccatos are nice. You get a real kind of harpsichord-like quality. And I like the kind of little after, after the fact kind of sound of it being muted. That's really nice. That's quite inspiring. And so now let's hear the patch which has that combined with a piano and a harp. So we 
we've got that. Yeah, I just thought that was a cool standout sound for me. I don't know, it's quite unusual. I don't know if I would necessarily arrive at a sound like this. And again, that sort of the sound of the note being cut off kind of appeals to me. I can imagine running this through an arpeggiator. In fact, let's do that. Um, of fun um, yeah so next we have the harp so the basic harp sound is okay it's pretty good um, personally I like my other harp better um, just for kind of normal harping activities I use the uh, what is it I think it's the orange tree samples angelic harp um, this is a very kind of close mic harp so it has a particular kind of um, roundedness which almost sounds not quite natural um, so maybe good for certain situations but what I do like is the performances of these things called octave drops a regular octave drop so I'll just play that so again it's kind of random timing wise the idea would be you just kind of create this nice pool of notes a harp it just seems to work really well and you just get the lovely detail of the changing kind of texture of the fingers and the fingernails kind of on the different notes something that would be very difficult to achieve um, with just a kind of playing it yourself there's all this additional kind of information in the timbre of the rep repeated notes. Um, here we've got irregular repetition, similar kind of idea. Little sort of slightly uncertain tremolos. Imagine if you had like multiple ones of these, so if we duplicate that and then we kind of, and then we pan it this way and we pan it that way, and then we play them both. A lot of these sounds feel like they're all about space. I mean, uh, as in the space of a room as opposed to, uh, as opposed to outer space. You know, so kind of having different sounds in different panning positions feels like something that would be very natural to do with this kind of collection is to sort of create like a, an environment around the listener you know something like that and pan this one over here And so on and so forth.
Isn't that delicious? Um, so what I will say is there are a few bumps in terms of the velocities there. So I did find myself struggling a bit to control, you know, is this going to be a loud note? Is this going to be a soft note? Because um, I'm a trained pianist, so normally my aim is pretty good. And in that case, I was, you know, found myself having a little bit of a hard time. But you really can't fault the uh, the sort of the intention behind the sound and the the kind of super pianissimo dynamics there. Sounds very natural to my ears. I do have like the Felt Piano by Spitfire Labs, for example, which fe feels like it's in a similar category. And I would say that this one is definitely able to be more expressive at the extreme quiet level and just has a bit more going on to it. Um, so yeah, really nice little soft piano for those kind of uh, Thomas Newman-y soft piano needs. Our final category of sounds is percussion. And so we've got um, some tubular bells here, which I've picked out from all of the possible percussion sounds. Um, again, there's like heaps and heaps of stuff that I'm not covering here. So like, you know, just in tubular bells, we've got, you know, water bucket, for example, which is like a weird thing where the pitch shifts. But I've just chosen these two here because they're really rich sounding. They've really gone for it with the tail and the kind of sustain of these notes. You know, and I'll turn my headphones up a bit, but there's not really much hiss or any kind of noise floor that I'm hearing. Um, yeah, very cool. You could imagine lopping off the attack, you know, using something like this. And creating a cool sort of pad. Yeah, awesome. Hard mallets, similar sort of thing, slightly different tone. Lovely and slightly detuned. I mean, who knew? Tubular bells, I could get excited about yet another tubular bells patch, but here we are. I don't know, just something about, I guess, the intention that they had when they were trying to capture this sound and the way that they set things up and the way that they kind of sculpted that tone is just lovely. Um, next sound, we've got Glock and Crow, meaning Crotales or Crow Tales. Um, now then. So. Again, slightly kind of detuned. Possibly need to calibrate this a little bit with my keyboard. Finding the crossover between the low and the hard dynamics a little tricky. But isn't that a tasty sound? You know, we've got glockenspiels and celestes in the library, so you could probably reach somewhere similar by layering a couple of sounds that you have, but... I guess it's partly the fact that it's been hit so softly and... Yeah, anyway, something very nice about that. Something a bit brighter. Let's move on. So now I um, just wanted to kind of zero in on the Glock bow textures here. This is something, again, like I don't think I've got anything quite like this. Let's just listen to the sound. So we've got multiple bows happening here. Let's 
some really good ASMR type stuff here. You know, it almost sounds like things being reversed, but it's so nice that it comes from an organic source, you know, a kind of just a natural sound source. It's just some Boeing. Um, just love that blend of the sort of exotic and yet the kind of familiar at the same time. There's something really wholesome about that. Um, so yeah, again, just does one thing really, really well. So it's just like real highlight. Um, same thing with the Crotales. Crotales. Oh, piercing. The only thing about these is that they don't loop infinitely, sadly. Um, I'd love to get a version that just you could hold down forever and would continue to just give you delightful, twinkly goodness. But um, yeah, sadly they do run out, so <laughs> you have to kind of keep moving, moving to different chords if you want the sound to keep going, or just I guess you can kind of do a quick repeat. Um, and then we're on to our last four sounds, so thunder sheet brushes. A thunder sheet is basically big old sheet of metal that they use sometimes in a percussion section of an orchestra for special effects and here it's being played by a brush and we've got just some kind of cool brushy sounds which I don't really have that many of really low dynamic stuff gotta be careful because I'm gonna hit one in a minute that's gonna go bong there we go <laughs> Now we're definitely getting into the more esoteric end of things. And if you do any kind of like really experimental sort of music or just a lot of sound design, I think there's lots of goodies in this library. Um, I just picked out that one because it was, yeah, kind of a novel sound that I hadn't really seen covered elsewhere. Um, then we've got our rubber ball effects. Rubber ball is uh, kind of like a bouncy ball on a stick that's usually dragged across the top of certain percussion instruments, creates this kind of wailing mammoth call type sounds. So just um, quite useful. I've got things that do this already, but it's kind of one of those things you can never have too many of because there's so much variation with the sound and maybe you just need the right one. Whoops. Oof. That's kind of cool. So that's all kind of useful bread and butter stuff and could just kind of fill out the existing library. Um, more rubber ball sounds, this time on a gong. You've probably heard these before. But, you know, devil's in the detail. There's your ambient track. Yeah, really great. More balls on sticks again. I've just gone for all the rubber ball effects, but with each of these instruments, there's a whole bunch more. I'll just give you a little taste. Um, you know, so we've got single hits. Oh, with this one, we've only got two, but yeah, there's a bunch of things that we didn't cover. Um, you can browse the patch list at your leisure. Um, the nice thing about the orchestral tools libraries is that you can actually purchase individual patches um, rather than needing to purchase the whole lot. Uh, so if there's like sounds here that you come across, you think, oh, that'd be useful, then you don't necessarily have to buy the whole library. Um, so anyway, Grand Castle is basically a bass drum, so... Just really good, meaty, well recorded, nice and clean, and uh, very creatively performed. Love it. Now we have a wind gong. The rubber ball effects first. See, this sort of thing I really don't mind just holding down a key. Doesn't feel like cheating. Sometimes all you need is a metallic drone, you know? Uh, now we've got Bode, and this is our last patch, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's funny that, like, I've got gong samples and I've got Bode gong samples, but I just don't have any that go like that. So that's a really nice one. 
I think it's something about the fact that there's a lot of patience <laughs> in the performance here, and they're going for something... I don't know, they just have great ears, or they have a great sensibility. Yeah, I appreciate that. This is a great one. It just goes on and on. Almost sounds like electronic feedback. I don't know, they must have stitched a few recordings together here, maybe? I don't know. Or maybe they're just blowing back and forth. But yeah, they're giving you a lot for free there, so, you know, um, it's great sound. So, that's it, we've reached the end of my patch list. Um, thank you very much for joining me on that sonic journey through some of the sounds from Salu, which is the new um, orchestral tool sample library, covers voices, we've seen percussion, um, we've got solo strings and also a string quartet, um, and also harp and piano and something called the canal. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate you joining me for the ride. Thank you again to Orchestral Tools for giving me the library to try out. And yeah, thanks for your attention and see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.